Okay, so let's move on to inserts. And what inserts basically are, are they are a point in the track where we can insert a processor. Okay, one of these processors might be EQ, might be compression. We're going to talk about which processors you're going to put in there. But basically, in the signal flow of a track, so as the track goes from input to output, basically, if you put an insert in the in that signal flow, you're inserting it in that point so that the unprocessed signal before the insert is is stopped and goes through that processor. So the process signal comes out of the processor and that's now what you're dealing with on your fader and your panning and sending out of the track. So none of that unprocessed signal is there anymore. Okay, so let's look at this drum track here to um, view that a little better and hear that. So here's our drum track. Okay, we're going to take and go click on the inserts. Okay, these are inserts A through E. If we click on the the lighter gray area, we have the option to add an insert. And we'll just do a multi-channel plugin and EQ. We'll start with EQ1 band just to keep it nice and simple. And so what what EQ is is EQ is adjusting the amount, the gain, or the volume of different aspects of the frequency spectrum. So I want to adjust the gain of my high frequencies, or my low frequencies, or my mid frequencies. But there's a handful of things we can do. We can actually take out frequencies above or below a certain area. Okay, and that's called a high pass filter or a low pass filter. So high pass is going to let the high stuff pass. Everything that's blue here is going to get taken away. So listen to our drums. Okay, so we just totally get rid of the low frequency. So I'm doing this to try to illustrate what an insert does. It routes the whole signal through here, and the whole signal is processed. So what we're hearing is just completely processed signal. It's it's after we're hearing the effects of this EQ. We're not hearing any of the original signal. The original signal, if we bypass that, would be that. As soon as we put this in here, we don't hear any of that original signal anymore. Okay? Very important, that's unprocessed versus processed. You'll get it in a minute, okay? When we talk about auxiliary sends and returns. Okay, why I'm stressing this so much. Okay, so that's that's what an insert is. So the two most common things you're going to put on an insert are equalization and compression. So EQ, let's go ahead and change to our 7-band EQ so we can look at this a little better. And you can see we have the same controls as that 1-band. We could put our low-pass or high-pass filter here, okay, or here's our low-pass, okay, and we can put these kind of effects as little kind of a telephone effect there. Okay. Turn those off and now we've got back to the original. Okay. Or we can take and these are called peak dip filters and we can take and either peak or dip at a certain frequency. So right here around 1k, 2k, that's kind of our most prominent frequencies in the in our for our ears so if we boost that you hear more of a crispness in the snare there you can hear the high end okay we take stuff out you can hear how okay and you want to remember that it's not always about adding frequencies, boosting frequencies. It's actually better to take away. And so the best way to illustrate that is basically I could go like this and this and say, hey, you know what, that sounds really cool. I got a bunch of low end happening, a bunch of high. But you don't realize that if you just took and kind of brought down the middle, you accomplish the same thing, okay? So it's better for the sound. It'll keep it more clear, more crisp, 
if you do less EQ and if you do more subtractive EQ than additive EQ. So see what you can do with taking frequencies away more than by adding frequencies. So let's we'll start with that. Okay. So as we as we add EQ, you're going to notice that what what we're trying to do is we're trying to clarify our mix. So one of the one of the three purposes of EQ is to um to help balance the frequencies in the mix because what happens is these sounds kind of get on top of each other and they mask each other or cover each other up so our ears are only capable of processing so much information at the same time and so if two elements are right on top of each other with the same kind of similar frequencies we're going to hear whatever's a little bit louder okay and so part of EQ is to balance that and the more elements you have in a mix the more you have to take away from the sounds so you can't necessarily have everything sounding really thick and full because it's going to kind of step on the toes of everything else okay the other two purposes of EQ are to make things sound better and also to use them as effect as an effect so we did that telephone effect earlier and that would be one of those purposes okay so we'll do some EQ on here and then real quick let me show you how compression works so we're gonna go to our our main compressor here that comes with Pro Tools and we can hear what happens okay so what compression is doing is it's actually taking away the peaks of the signal so if we take a look at our zoom in a little bit there at our drum track right here we've got these peaks that are occurring and the compressor is just automatically turning down those peaks when they occur and then turning the signal back up when these low areas happen okay so when this peak happens the volume is going to go down and then come back up now the reason for that is what it's going to do in, in the end it's going to turn down our peaks and then turn up our lower areas so it's going to make the difference between the peaks and the valleys less so it will make our sound more even and constant instead of something being loud and then being soft okay okay so the tough thing with compression is it's kind of hard to hear when you're getting started with it unless you do it on extreme levels and so you're gonna probably have a tendency to over compress for a little while so you can hear it but once you start really being able to hear it well you'll be able to dial it in to just kind of subtle areas and that's what the key to mixing is getting your compression on on subtle amounts so if you put compression on subtle amounts on all of your tracks it's gonna make everything more balanced you're not going to necessarily hear this big effect of compression, but it's going to make everything in your mix kind of more of an even level so you don't lose stuff as things get softer or louder. Okay? So you can see right here this orange thing is telling us when it's turning down the signal. And notice when the snare hits and the kick hits, that pops up more. Okay? So, yes, this is less right here but you can see that it's more even than the original that's in and out okay and that's why we have makeup gain so because because we turn down the peaks then we can turn everything back up more we have more headroom or room before peaking and and so then we can make our signal louder with the same signal just by turning down some of the peaks and now turn everything up and so the average is louder even though the peak isn't louder okay? okay so that's kinda how compression works so what we're gonna do now is just kind of go through and put some EQ and compression on all of these different tracks okay so we listen to it okay so the electric piano for example actually has a lot of 
low frequency that's kind of muddying up the low end. Okay, and our electric guitar has the same kind of issue. There's a nice little trick you can do if you have something that has similar EQ to another element. You can hold the Option key, or Alt on Windows system, and kind of click and drag that over. Okay, if you are pulling from a stereo track to a mono track, you'll have that same problem. But if you're pulling from a stereo track to another stereo track, it'll copy over just fine. And we're going to do a similar thing on our piano as well. We might put our peak somewhere else, but we're going to pull out the low end as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up a 7-band EQ, pull down some low frequency there. Okay, and then we can take and throw some compression on some of these aspects. Okay, well, let's go ahead and jump ahead to our lead guitar there. Command equals back over. You can see how this compression will do a little something to it. So this threshold here, as we lower the threshold, it's basically defining how how the level at which the signal needs to go over in order to start turning it down. So a lower threshold is going to be more compression. Okay, so then we just kind of took the edge off of that electric guitar a little bit so that it's not quite so popping out every time that uh, those big starts, those big transients hit at the start of each line. Okay, so there's our start of mixing there using our inserts. And in just a moment, we'll start looking at our, our auxiliary sends and returns. <laughs> 